more and more people are hearing now that Connecticut does have the worst achievement gap in the country. But what a lot of people have not heard is that we've got a number of public schools across this state that are getting phenomenal results in closing that gap. So we went out and uh, visited nine of these success story schools, talked to principals, teachers, parents about what it is that they're doing to, to achieve such dramatic success. And we were really able to draw five lessons from that work. First, we really need to have parents as partners in our public schools. Second, we need great teachers. It's as simple as that. Third, we need to give principals the power to lead. Fourth, we really need to use data to drive instruction. And fifth, we need to build school cultures around student achievement. And so you don't have to take this from me. What's really most powerful is to hear this from the principals and teachers who are doing this work themselves. We let the parents know that they're you know, a big part of what we're doing here. They gotta deal with us. They've gotta come through the doors because their kids are here. And what has happened is by us doing that full range of things, we capture parents at times that otherwise they would not have been involved in the school. It's a very child-centered school. So you would walk through our hallways, you'd see students uh, engaged in hands-on learning. You'd see students working with um, families, with adults throughout the building, not just in your typical classroom setting out in hallways. We have a PTA office right here in our building and they, they have free reign of the building. We need to have open communication so that parents really understand the why behind what we do. If we thought that we could do it on our own, it, it just wouldn't happen. Uh, we really count on our parents to support the school and support their children and their education. Teachers are our most precious resources. The job they do is incredibly hard, and having an outstanding teacher, research has actually shown that having an outstanding teacher for three years versus having a poor teacher for three years, you end up with a tremendous difference in terms of where the students, in, in their testing, in their outcomes of where they end up. What I'm looking for are people who um, uh, are incredibly committed to what they're doing, uh, really aligned with the culture uh, and the professional values that we have here. Because if we are, if we're going to be about achievement or we're going to be about the reach values, the people who are in front of the kids need to really live those and embody those values. I can teach somebody how to teach reading. I can teach you how to teach mathematics. I can't teach passion. Anybody that has that intense of a passion um, for children is somebody I want by my side because I really am intense when it comes to how much hope and how much passion I have for the education of the students here. It's the approaches, it's the missions, and it's how it's carried out. Everyone genuinely cares about the kids, and it's contagious. Our principals are the CEOs of the school, but they're also the instructional leaders. So we try to build an infrastructure around them that takes away the politics, the real estate, the business part. Here, because I'm, I oversee the entire school operation, I do have that ability. So if it's good for kids, I can stop on a dime, I can shift, I can reallocate funding because I controlled my budgets. You have to find out what the shortcomings are that your kids are walking through the door with. If it's, if it's clothing, if it's child care, if it's having activities after school that are, that are positive, you've got to fill that gap. When I came here, we did assessments on every child in our building, and the staff probably thought I was crazy. Well, what do you mean? I was like, I have to know where every child is. The only thing I can control is the environment that we all live in to a point that I have to have trust in my staff that they're going to do the right thing. People want to be those kind of leaders. They want to start their own school. They want to transform a school, but they also want the, the respect and responsibility and support to pull it off. There's at least the beginning of a framework in place, or at least data to create a framework, where um, being a successful teacher and being a successful principal and being a successful superintendent has to do with raising the abilities and the success level of kids in your school. We definitely look at data a lot. We don't just look at the CMT data at the end of the year. We actually look at data every six weeks. We have our own interim assessments, because we can't wait until March to find out if our instruction is working or not. We pretest and then we do three additional assessments throughout the year and that assessment allows us to inform instruction. Turning that data into an action plan. So that's the step that really makes data powerful. Everyone is different and we want them to be the best they can be but we have to start where they are. 
I think that just by observing and recording and uh, collecting data as we go along, I'm able to really see the children progress through each objective. If you focus on the data, data does not lie. And it's right there and it um, takes away the opinion out of instruction and bases it totally on fact. You know, some schools are much more effective than others, really seeming to create a culture of excellence and getting faculty to buy in and creating a school you walk into and you go, my goodness, something special is going on here. Every member of the faculty here, everyone from administration to the custodians, everyone shows every child that they do have high expectations for them. I always say it's not if college, it's which college. Um, and I say that to all my sixth graders as they come in. Everybody's on the same page. We have a common language throughout the building. I know everybody. I know their names. I'm not lost. Um, in a number. What I want my teachers to know is that, yes, I have higher demands on you than you might have at another school, but I appreciate what you do and I want to show that to you. It's the culture that's here that makes for an environment in which we can push the students so, ac so much academically, which then pushes their scores up. Teachers are going to feel great if they feel successful, if they feel their students are successful. So when we see it, we recognize it. They've created an environment where teachers feel that their voices are heard, that their input is valued, that performance is recognized, and that everybody's pulling together to kind of, you know, pull in on those oars in the same direction. What we've seen with these success stories is that we actually are closing the achievement gap in a number of public schools across the state. We can do this. It's not that their parents are different, that their kids are different, that they're in different neighborhoods. It's that everyone involved in these schools has come together in a different way to focus on raising student achievement. And that's really the ultimate lesson here. CONCAN's work is about closing the achievement gap statewide, and all of us have a role to play in doing that.